मस्जिद सर मस्जिद सर सर दिस इज द थिंग आई एम गोइंग टू यूज सर दैट अनदर थिंग आई पुट एज अ बैकअप ओके सर हां हां सर वीडियो लॉग इन और डायरेक्टली यस सर यस सर वीडियो लॉग इन इन योर लैपटॉप यस सर आई लॉग इन इन द माय लैपटॉप सर नो यू आर यू डिवाइस इज लैपटॉप यस सर लैपटॉप अनदर वन इज पीसी दैट आई केप्ट इन माय कैबिन Okay, laptop. Are you connected land now? Yes, sir, land only. Nelson, sir, uh, cabin. I am sitting. Land. What? Log out there, sir. Sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What do you log out for? Sir, I didn't get you, sir. Ajit, sir. Sir, that uh, internet uh, access. Uh, ID password you log in no yes sir that to log out sir no i have to log out from the this thing ah uh. no that internet login you log out it will uh, work to go to log in just a minute sir उट What I told the without login, you will get the full benefit. That's why I told. I will log out, sir. No problem. Ravindra sir, now you are not audible. I think it better you log out and then log in, as he said. Uh, this sir, we will admit only uh, people, uh, outsiders only after it is ready. Let sir log in. Sir is coming here.
Yeah, I, I'll be here for some more time. Yeah, I think the other is No, 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 you want to Oh, my God. I don't know what is it. Radius are there, sir, or... Okay. I'll be here for some more time. I will... Uh, or I'll give him a call. Before I go, I'll, I'll give him a call. So, good evening to all. Uh, I'm Dr. D. Ravindran, Faculty of School of Management. I'm very thankful to Principal Father Augustine Charge for providing this opportunity. I thank uh, beloved Dean and our Hachori and Faculty Coordinator for providing this opportunity to share my views on today's topic with respect to FTP. Uh, data analysis with the SPSS. So today uh, I try to share about the things uh, related to writing a literature review and measurement and scaling and how we have to design the questionnaire. These are the points uh, we can discuss. Just a minute. 
Ajit sir, can you make me as a host? Okay. Yes. So I hope uh, the slide is visible to you. So, so I can go directly to the topic. Yes. So uh, before going, there's a small question. So we normally use the word called review of literature. Uh, is there is any difference between uh, review of literature and literature review? These are two words we normally use. So first we have to be very clear about is there is any uh, difference between these two words? Yes. So literature review is a general, a broad, with the infinite possibilities of getting information and it is unfocused. So when we have a no a clear objective what to do, when we have no clear focus on what is the type of research we are going to do, uh, it, is, it is like a browsing. It's like a browsing. So when we have to say, when you want to get a proper review, it is called as a review of literature. So whenever we start with the research, uh, we say that we have to start with the reviewing the literature. Re literature already we know that it is a, a previously available data. It may be from the government source or any database are from previous journals, books, etc. So uh, when we wish to write a review of literature, we should have a specific reason for it. We should have a proper objective and we should have a defined area with purpose and we should do a review of literature process in an order. So only it is called as review of literature. So mostly when we start writing article or uh, when we tend to collect the data for uh, our thesis. Okay, so we mostly just started browsing uh, whatever we are getting, who are referring and we try to store n number of uh, journal articles, n number of uh, PPTs, questionnaires, etc. Without having any proper objective and without having any proper order to store. So what will happen, for example, the this is our uh, PhD is for uh, approximately three to four years. The first three years we will focus only on review of literature. Only the third year and only we will come to the uh, questionnaire part and we start doing uh, data collection and we will go for analysis. So the out of four years, approximately three years, uh, we will be focusing on a review of literature. And most of the time, in some cases, uh, the topic is also fixed at the end of the second year or third year. So we have to be very careful in doing a review of literature, whatever the efforts we are doing, whatever the data we are collecting, storing, should be proper. Otherwise, we will be having a n number of or a GB of data, but at the end of the day, when we start writing our thesis or article, it may not be useful or we will find very difficult to uh, identify which are all the articles or which are the data are relevant. So we have to be very careful when we start writing review of literature, we should have a proper objective. Okay, this is the general step in writing an a thesis or a PhD thesis. So identification of research area, data collection, data processing, review of literature. And before going for a final uh, thing, we have to go for a pre-testing the questionnaire and analyzing and with the formulation of objectives, we go for a research report preparation. So these are the approximately nine steps I listed here. So uh, is which part will be uh, applied more with respect to our collected review of literature? So can anybody uh, please respond for this? So among the various chapters or various steps in writing the thesis, which one will be more applicable chapter yes so practically speaking the review of literature even we have a topic called review of literature that may be a, a second chapter or a third chapter uh, review of literature is applicable in all the chapters uh, starting from the introduction page. Even we can say that uh, the first part of our thesis may be abstract. 
or sometimes before the phd we will be submitting the synopsis starting from the abstract part to the our end conclusion part the review of literature is applied so it's not only restricted to the chapter review of literature but it is useful for all the chapters that we have to keep in mind so whatever we are data we are collecting we should be very careful this data can be applicable in this chapter yes the next one uh, please see this uh, following words like see observe view notice watch perceive glance look uh, whether the, all the words are same similarly the words like design review criticize analyze evaluate interpret but all the words can be used alternatively no sometimes so the words can be a uh, similar but they have a different usage may different specific meaning it change with the uh, situation of usage differ with the people who is using it and differ with the purpose of usage so i mentioned this is when we are started writing a review of literature or started searching for a review of literature each and every word we call it as a keyword is very important when we choose a wrong keyword we cannot proceed with our review of literature review of literature so what is our general understanding if you are not very clear about a review of literature so review of literature is a bunch of words uh, written together as a paragraph it can be a conclusion of content we collected from various sources various articles it's it's not a, a just a description of a work so if you are doing some work it's just writing it it's not a description of work and the review of literature we should not give our own opinions or our self justification so mostly in the many research or in the article writing the biggest mistake the researcher will do is before started writing or before preparing a question itself we have some assumption in our mind so we always search we always write we always collect data we always interpret data expecting some our opinions to be justified that is a mistake so the review of literature we should not include our opinion or our self justification at any point of place okay so what is review of literature so the review of literature is a documentation of comprehensive review it can be a published or unpublished work mostly it will be the secondary sources in the areas of specific interest the word specific interest is very important and why we are doing review of literature the main objective is to find our problems that are already investigated and those need to further investigation so when we are writing an article or selecting a topic the researchers always focus on the problem to be studied if it is new or to be verified if it is already addressed by other earlier researchers so the review of literature has to be focus on the problems yes so the purpose of review of literature why we are doing review of literature when we are new or we have a semi knowledge about a topic which we want to do a research we should have a proper background knowledge and the review of literature will guide us where to focus where to start and the review of literature will try to identify the concepts that we have to focus that we have to study that we have to interpret to identify the potential relationship between the concepts and formulation of researchable hypothesis so the review of literature part has the impact on research methodology part if we consider the thesis or article research methodology part is very very important any reviewer go to the directly to the research methodology to find the quality of the article or quality of the thesis but that research methodology part depends upon the quality of review of literature we done connecting the concepts and our proposed hypothesis and the review of literature also guide us to select the appropriate methodology that is the research design even the sample size 
etc and it helps to identify the data sources so what are the ways i can collect the data that also will be guided by a review of literature and uh, to know more about other structured reports so the review of literature will give you idea what are the other resources can be referred that is also possible with the review of literature so finally the purpose of review of literature is to introduce the topic to the readers so we are in assumption whatever we are writing a publication article it can be known by or understandable by all so even if i am from a management perspective if my article or thesis is read by a statistician or a psychological person it should be understandable then only it is called as a proper article or proper research so uh, the review of literature will give a overview about our topic or our research it helps to explain the trend what is the current trend it is happening and it helps to decide the research framework a new art to be get adopted and the main important thing is finding the research gap so review of literature will help to find the research gap yes so uh, in writing a review of literature we have to focus on these things we have to categorize the reviews we might be getting a lot of data lot of information we have to categorize we have to segment we have to cluster and whatever we are collecting we have to analyze evaluate critically and all each line each keyword each concepts to be discussed in the review of literature should have the purpose or it should be related to objectives yes just a minute yes so what are the things to do in uh, review of literature we have to find the major database resources so for the challenge for the researcher in writing review of literature to where to find the data so for this we have to depend on our guide or our co scholars or the institution in which we want to submit our thesis or the actual awarding university so what is their suggestion we have to follow and we have to focus on the framing research questions so next to the research gap we have to write down what are the possible research questions for this our review of literature and the entire thesis should give the answer to the questions and the main important thing in starting to write the review of literature is to find keywords so after finding the keywords we have to search we have to download articles we have to read 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 the same article again and again from the top to bottom and we have to note down the key points again from the key points we have to refine we have to start writing this is the way we have to go for a review of literature yes so uh, for proceeding in the review of literature we have to find the journals or websites which are most cited by the recent researchers so we have to check with the citation score or we can check with the impact factor of the journals and we have to find the articles from the recent specialized authors in the area so uh, whenever we are downloading an article we have to check what year it belongs to which journal it belongs to if we identify the journal then we have to check the journal authenticity what is the impact factor and with respect to the author we have to we can use the research gate or uh, scopus or linkedin by this we can understand the work done by the authors so mostly uh, the reviewers of the paper or reviewers of the thesis always look for the reference which is recent at least 3 to 5 years the maximum and authors who are contributing more and more their paper should be referred in the article or the thesis for this is google scholar and the research gate or the free uh, Uh, links we can easily browse about it and we have to frame a proper title to focus towards our objectives so keywords after the keywords we have to find out the proper 
titles the title which leads to the solution for objectives and we have to plan our bibliography and we have to decide how much i have to refer how much articles i have to refer how much journals i have to see how much website i have to do and how many topics so even before we are sitting in the computer to start browsing we should have at least this much number of plans otherwise we will just search we can't end up with a review of literature okay so how to proceed in review of literature writing we should have an abstract we focus on the abstract for example why why i am saying this uh, for example we get an article from this we are going to write a review of literature take an article read the abstract first because uh, many reputed uh, journals or articles may be paid no problem even we can read the abstract and keywords that will give you more idea how to proceed and they will be giving the reference links that links will give you idea where i can get other free resources so reading an abstract or if it is an entire thesis or an article means you can go to the conclusion part and focus on the research methodology and finding and suggestions even there is a 200 page sub thesis if you go through at least this 10 to 20 pages it will give a clear idea what we want to grasp from the particular article or particular thesis and for writing or for referring this some of the tools available is mostly it's a free manly and note sotero refer and write if you can use these tools which help in writing a decent review of literature yes so as i said we have to choose an article or author with a good research score with a good citation index with a good impact factor and it should be listed in reports referred by the experts or it can be from the reputed government database okay so again a reminder review of literature process we have to keep in mind with the key words and compare works from different authors from different journals so whenever we are getting one topic try to search the same topic in different journals from the different authors we just to compare we will get many ideas and whenever we identify some concept or a points from few papers we have to discuss with the scholars or the guide to get the different views because whenever we are reading the paper again and again we might be restricted with some points when we are discussing with others we might be getting a different opinion that will help us in proceeding with the review of literature okay so in writing a review of literature there are many methods but the two methods are catalog method and dialog method so catalog method is just describing what happened or what explained in other articles and what are the found in that article are about the summary but what is suggested in the review of literature is dialog method we have to read we have to interpret we have to critically analyze what are the points discussed there concluded there and we have to ask questions from the paper or the thesis and we try to find out the answers from the paper itself so analyzing a paper explaining it interpreting it and synthesizing the analyzed process into a sentence that is the best way of writing a review of literature rather than just describing or identifying some sentences which may be relevant to your topic okay then when we are writing a review of literature it should be in a chronological order or it can be in a reverse chronological order we can start with 2021 can go in a reverse that is a one way of writing a review of literature or we can have a different views of authors this author view we can take two to three paragraph with respect to this another view of author we can go like this or we can have a, our own topics we can fix up with the topics under this topic we can conclude with 10 reviews another topic another 10 to 15 reviews we can go like this or we can frame a heading and subheading first and we try to fix up with our reviews so uh, finally our review of literature should have quantitative explanation qualitative justification experimental identification and observational facts which may infer from our regular visit to the field or interview with others that also can be included in the review of literature yes so while writing a review of literature we have to keep in mind the few things again uh, we have to be very careful in how we are introducing and 
we have to careful on identifying some variables okay for example dependent variable independent variable mediating variable moderating variable these are things we will discuss later okay so there are different types of variables how it is used we are going to use in our thesis or in our article but what is the view or what is the application or what is the usage of this variables in other research papers that should be a supporting one and we should have a proper theoretical framework for the theory rating we can again use manly or google scholar that will give more concepts and theories and whenever we are writing a review of literature we should not always find a positive or supporting points what we assume to conclude in our thesis we can also go for a contradictory views so one side one review with a supporting view another side with a contradictory view from the two different or three different authors but again this can be your research cap to justify how you want to proceed and we have to follow the suggested style the normal suggested style is apa format and according to your university or according to the journal you are going to publish we have to follow the suggested style in writing and what is the voice we have to use so we have to review various papers and we have to write and we can give for a proof reading with others and finally with the proper reference yes so these are the few inputs for writing a review of literature so now i share the few uh, data sources so mostly it will be free from this itself we can write a decent review of literature the shodh ganga infinite.ac.in it is our indian government website in this most of the universities uploading their recently published thesis for example your study is related to customer relationship management in banking means you can search here you can get n number of theses published in various universities you can go through it you can review it you can understand the questionnaire you can understand what is the methodology they use you can identify the gap it is a very good source for referring next one www.ssrn.com this is a free resource here you can search for open access journals reputed journals you can find next to a journal finder you got stuck what journal i can find so always we are saying reputed journal we don't know what is a reputed journal means you just type your title of your paper or a thesis this will list you the n number of journals which includes a lot of articles discussed with related to your topic then you can go through the journals this is a journal finder it's elsevier's link or other is you can go to scopus.com here if you know the issn number or if you know the isbn number if you know the author name if you know the title you can directly get here and you have to register for this using a mail id and if you paid I mean you can get all the paid resources also otherwise you will get the open resources next one the very important thing uh, which is e colon or sometimes above our scopus listed thing it's a web of science it's called as mgl.clarivate.com this will give sca index or SCIA indexed journals which are so reputed so valid for writing a review of literature from this sometimes you may not be able to get the full articles but you may be able to see the abstract the keywords and main concepts discussed that may be more than enough to proceed in your review of literature or finding the gap next simple thing research gate so if you go to the research gate if you register if you choose any keywords this will give n number of articles and you can filter year wise for example you need only in 2021 or 2022 2021 you can filter you can find out you can find out the researcher wise data you can find project wise you can find publication wise you can list out so this will give you idea so for example if you are browsing for employee satisfaction if you put the keyword employee satisfaction you can able to find out n number of articles studied from various countries uh, published in various journal and go to the next uh, keyword so if you are using the different different keyword you can find out which is a prominent keyword for this i will get a proper review of literature of uh, researchers and participants my recommendation from my experience we have to proceed with the review of literature so we have to collect the review of literature and we have to proceed with the review of literature for the research so what is suggested in deciding your topics for example either for the thesis or for your articles 
or deciding with your variables what you are going to use what is suggested is please search the keywords or the topics in the sources which topic which keyword or for which are all the variables you are able to get more recent diverse articles please choose that topic or please choose that variable because sometimes we will be so innovative in the process of getting a different innovative research gap that is not addressed by any of the persons we end up with shortage of review of literature even our view even our idea even our concept is very innovative but none of the evaluator will accept either it is an article or a thesis if you are not having enough reviews in the recent years there's a chance of rejection so that's why we have to work in a reverse for which topic for which area for which are all the data we are able to get enough articles we can go with this that is always recommendable so another database paid database is www.procast.com and justart.org this thing we can get a reputed journals but it's a paid one taylor and francis this will give a reputed articles from the various domains and this is the mandley.com this helps you in searching for the article finding out the related authors who are working on the same area or uh, it will help in review of literature writing in organizing your review of literature organizing your references bibliography citation etc this is a very good wonderful tool that every researcher has to learn and after writing a review of literature we can use the grammarly it's a paid version is also available free version is also available by using this it can be incorporated in our uh, normal word even a mail or anything so it is it will simplify your uh, mistakes it will correct your grammar mistakes it will suggest what are the proper words or the synonyms sometimes you will be end up with the plagiarism we don't know how to reduce it that time this grammarly will guide you these are the alternate words you can use and sometimes in the paid version you can check the plagiarism parallelly when you are writing it so this is also useful for you and very common a friendly uh, link is scholar.google.com that's a google scholar so if you want to get any articles i mentioned about the previous lot of links and lot of journals but everything is available in the google scholar because all the reputed things will be listed in the google scholar it is scholar.google.com so i will just to show how it can be done the screenshot during the shortage of time so for example consumer preference in organic products you go to the scholar.google just to search it it will come like this okay so what you have to see is you can uh, select year wise you can filter citation wise you can do is so now i am saying so which article i have to choose there will be n number of articles will be coming so please check cited by which article is having more citation that is the article you have to refer because it's mostly accepted by many of the researchers so please search that type of articles to get downloaded so next uh, you are going through is if you download it so please you can see the title you can see the year you can see the journal you can see the abstract you can see the keywords whether it is useful for me or not even though you are not downloading the entire article by seeing the first page itself you can see whether it is useful or not then you can open the word document whenever we are doing side by side for example school uh, scholar dot google we are getting some data parallelly what we have to do is in the word document there's i can't call the reference okay if you click the reference there will be insert uh, end note so parallelly if you click the style please select apa fifth edition format or whatever may be the latest format so please enable it so when we uh, click this reference that's a n note you have to select the end of the documents okay because whatever you are collecting it should come at the reference should be at the end and you can change into bulletin or 123 so mostly it is recommended at the end of the document and 123 you have to select this and the ap format you have to select so uh, like this it will come so whenever you are searching for the article so as i told uh, this is the article okay so if you want to find out um, what is the first name of the author okay so if you click this button it will show the first author 
the first author you have to write so for example here so this is the copied one from the uh, citation from the google scholar so this is the first name of the author and if it is a more number of authors means you can add at all etl full stop comma and bracket you have to add the year of the publication so this is available here right so uh, when we use this when you click this double quotation like this you know, if you click this automatically it will show apa format triple e format you have to copy this and you have to paste here and defaultly if you click the end node this will show one and below itself this reference will be automatically written so from this abstract you might be getting some points and you can write it stated that consumer preference of equitable to organic products so whenever you are reading parallelly write the author first author name and if it is a more number of you can put it all and the year and please add the end note automatically the apa format of the reference will be added so whenever you are writing one by one one by one the parallelly your review of literature and reference will be taken care a simple reference tool these are the other uh, tools you can use for browse okay yes so with this uh, review of literature i want to stop here with the review of literature so uh, next i want to move to the next topic it's called as measurement and scaling so i have to little bit uh, fast because i have to discuss about many points with respect to the questioner uh, formation a uh, little bit i will be rushing if anybody uh, want to stop me you can text me okay uh, okay so if anybody uh, have any doubt at any point please stop me because i cannot uh, slow down my presentation okay measurement so next after the review of literature we are going to the uh, questioner development etc before that we have to learn some concept called measurement measurement is how we want to measure our collected data okay that's a measurement for this we have to know about some variables variable category variable numerical variable the other categorical variable it is a nominal variable ordinal variable the numerical it is a discrete or continuous the examples are given below okay so uh, nominal variable okay i will show this next one uh, variables uh, there are other type of variables with respect to the independent variable or dependent variable dependent variable are mostly the outcome for example if we say sales sales is outcome profit is outcome gender based on the gender the sales may vary based on the promotion the sales may vary based on the advertisement so so, so this side is called as independent variable which have the influence on the outcome is called as dependent variable so with this for example if i am taking this as independent variable this is a dependent variable there is some variable can be called as a mediator variable or mediating variable so whenever we are reading a review of literature try to find out this variables which has to be applied in our article or in our thesis so which is independent variable which is dependent variable and which is a mediating variable for example i am doing a discount promotion that is the independent variable you want to study the impact of this discount with the sales sales is a dependent variable here i want to add gender is there is any influence of gender with respect to the preference of discount this can be a mediating variable here moderating variable in the presence of advertisement how the gender preference will vary with respect to discount in the absence of advertisement how the preference of discount will vary with respect to the gender in increasing the sales that can be moder moderating may increase or decrease the influence of the mediating variable so when we are reading the article find out which is independent which is dependent which is moderating which is mediating just write down this for example i am showing this is independent variable job satisfaction is a thing we have to study, to study on job satisfaction among the employees in so and so organization this may be our title so job satisfaction is the dependent variable its outcome these are all things can be a independent variable here job stress how these variable will create a job satisfaction job stress is a mediating variable okay another things i want to study the performance i want to study the performance of the employees based on some stress factors it can be a job related organizational career related these are the independent variable so stress performance 
we want to study the stress factor it is an independent variable how it is influencing i want to measure the outcome the outcome or performance can be measured in the reduction of absenteeism or poor working relations uh, productivity morale and loss of interest so if these things are less i can say the performance is more how so i am studying independent variable its impact on dependent variable but in between stress job stress job stress is a mediating variable because of these factors you might get job stress because of this job stress your performance will be affected independent variable dependent variable mediating variable now i am adding a gender it's a moderating variable with respect to the gender if it is a man is having a more job stress or not if it is a woman having a more job stress or not is this gender is having a influence on job stress with respect to these factors in analyzing the performance simple study but we have to identify n number of factors and variables so please be careful come back to the scales okay variables are there we have to analyze how the scale is done in the variables it can be a nominal variable in nominal scale it can be ordinal scale it can be interval scale it can be ratio scale so uh, the picture clearly explained this nominal is just a count 1 2 3 4 5 how many male how many female how many engineers just counting what is the education level just counting rank if i am able to make them in order age i can make it is an order the mark score i can make it is an order so it is called as ordinal so it is coming in an ordinal scale interval scale with specific interval it is not a continuous one ratio is comparing with another variable it is a ratio scale so whenever we are identifying a variable try to find out what scale is used that can be applied in your paper or thesis so the other scaling techniques it can be used a comparative scales a non comparative scale if you want to compare your data you can use paired comparison rank order constant sum if it is a non comparative scale it is a continuous rating or item scale there we can use likert scale or semantic scale i just to show the pictures just i will want to move paired comparison you can have a two brands just to compare which is preferred or not among these two preferred or not preferred or not it's a just a paired comparison scale next rank order you are uh, listing out these are the possible investment options please rank it 1 2 3 4 5 for example i am ranking gold as a one bank as a two this is a rank order scale next constant sum scale your preference on amount of so your end result you have to fix your end result is 100 lakh you if you have 100 lakh what is your distribution of your investment So here at gold I want to invest twenty lakh share I want is a five lakh. So here the sum total is fixed, and I have you the uh, or the respondent has to fill these gaps. It's called as constant sum scale. Continuous rating scale it can be a strongly agreed to strongly disagree, or in the reverse, or it can be numbered with one to ten. It is a continuous rating scale. Semantic difference scale we have two end. we want to get the opinion qualitative things it can be used for semantic differential scale clean dirty just opposite dark well like likewise you have to find out two bipolar variables and you have to rank 1 2 3 4 5 to 6 to 7 or 3 5 whatever may be the respondent have to answer any one of the things this is called a semantic it is used for qualitative analysis staple scale it's again a bipolar you like or dislike it's just a simple strongly agree or strongly disagree this scale will say you like wise how much you are liking plus 1 to plus 5 you have to explain for example here i mentioned as high food quality it's a plus 4 sometimes it's a uh, high quality it's a very negative i dislike it it can be minus 5 so it's a bipolar it's not only the satisfaction and dissatisfaction the dissatisfaction what is the level of highest dissatisfaction that we can do it can be done in different ways as it showed this called as staple scale or bipolar scale so this thing we have to learn when we are doing a uh, measurement or scaling or forming a questionnaire next we have to focus on the validity that's a important word called the validity uh, you will be collecting a data so for normally we we have with the review of literature we form some variables with the variables we go for a, a questionnaire we will go for a pilot study why we are doing a pilot study whatever the data i collected is valid or not because after collecting 1000 1500 questionnaire if i found my data is wrong if it is not giving a proper answer i cannot go for the collection again so i can go for 100 or 50 data 
sample data, pilot study. Then I have to go for a validity check whether my content is okay or not. That is called as content validity. Whether my questionnaire covers all the topic, I have to do it. If there is any change in scale required, I have to do it. That's called a construct validity. Whether the variable used, construct used, or item used is right, that is called a construct validating. Next one, test of reliability. So here we are using a Crompa Alpha. Minimum it should have a 0.6. Uh, at least uh, 0.6 is okay. 0.8 is a very good score. This says that the same questionnaire is used multiple times to the multiple people. Even the first year, second year, third year, it gives the same response mean I can believe the tool. That is called as reliability. So using a reliability, you can justify my questionnaire is reliable. For example, I will go with uh, my study. So I just want to use my study for an example. Okay. So here I did a pilot study. Okay. So I identify 11 construct. The main heading are called as construct. The sub variables are called as item. So whenever we are writing a thesis or the research articles, we have to find out construct. The article may have a two or three construct. Each contract may have a five to 10 items. It depends upon the content. Okay. So here I found 11 construct. I mentioned about how many items, items in the sub questions what I'm going to use. So here I analyzed the Crompo Alpha. From this, I found out Crompo Alpha is approximately 0.92 at 95% confidence level. So I can rely on this data and overall it is having 78 items 78 item means 78 options with respect to scale so i can use it and it is mostly it's a five point so the crom for alpha can be used only for the liquor scale or five item scales it cannot be used for our demographic or categorical variables next one we have a test for the test of normality here we are using a technical called skewness and cutthroat. It should be between minus 1.5 to plus 1.5. What is normality? Normality means we have a questionnaire. Okay, for example, if you are taking a gender means all the people are male or all the people are gender means it's not having normality. You should have an equal distribution from the response. Or otherwise, you are having a question number one in this all the people are saying is highly satisfied. Or all the people are saying it is a neutral or most of the people are saying is dissatisfied means it is biased. So you should have some number of responses with respect to the highly satisfaction, some responses with respect to the satisfaction, some responses neutral, some responses dissatisfaction, some responses highly dissatisfied. You should have all distribution that is called as normality. If it is not that the questionnaire cannot be used. So we have to go a normality test. Yes. So this is the uh, analysis I did. So this is under control. I use the same thing for the 11 variables the, from the questionnaire. I analyze is supporting. So I can use this interview schedule or called as a questionnaire. Why we have to do? If it is not valid at the time of analysis, the result will not come. Whatever hypothesis frame, which will not be validated. Yes. So next time directly come to the questionnaire design process. Whenever you want to design a questionnaire, specify the information needed, specify the type of interview method, what we are going to use. So your questionnaire design depends upon what type of survey you are going to do, whether you are going to distribute a Google form, whether you are going for a direct interview method, or if you want to going to distribute with many people, or we are going to arrange a consultancy for data collection, based on that you have to change the words or change the questions and determine the individual questions. And we have to frame a question, wording, and proper order, layout, and we will do a pre-testing, as I said in a pilot study. Yes. So the questionnaire can have a different set of uh, questions. The same way the questionnaire also can be structured or unstructured. Closed ended, closed ended or open ended. Closed ended means we are giving five option, and you are asking me to tick any one of the five option. You are giving two option. I have to choose any one of the two option. This is called as closed ended. Open ended means your name, your mobile number. What is suggested in pilot study, you can have an open-ended question. But in the final question, please try to avoid having open-ended question. If it is a closed tender question means analysis is very easy. Even if it's a two or three or four or five options, make it as a closed ended. This closed ended can be designed only with the help of review of literature in the pilot study. Okay. So uh, 
what are the source of error in questionnaire formation misleading or ambiguous question whenever we are asking question we should think in the response uh, responder point of view if you are thinking from our point of view the answer will be unique or answer will be different we need their opinion not our assumptions the interviewer can have a bias so please make a question with respect to the understandable of the interviewer or respondent and you can choose a wrong sample that may lead to the bias so uh, always higher number of sample size is better for having reducing the bias and we have a bias in data collection we can have a bias in data analysis we can have a bias in inference so please try to avoid these biases to have a proper designing of questionnaire question when we are forming it should be in a sequence order by reading a first question i should know what will be the next question i should have a sequence please use multiple choice questions have a question as impressive to answer pre test the question to avoid errors avoid lengthy questions or jargons or tough words that respondent cannot understand and please train the interviewer if you are not going to collect this question yes it should be eye catching it should have, it should be uh, uh, simple the layout should be very clear please use the clear and polite words please group the questions properly first few questions should be very easy mostly we will put as a demography your age your gender your occupation because this is very easy to fill so please make the respondent convenient in your first page then go for complicated or logical question that will encourage the respondent to respond and uh, avoid complex question or if it is a more complex question like that getting their reviews or any suggestion make it as a last yes so th this is the same thing is listed here okay so now i fastly move on with uh, my research how it is organized for your understanding okay so initially i started with the keyword so my uh, thesis is retailers preference of trade promotion schemes for fmcg product so from this you can find out the keywords retailer trade promotion schemes fmcg product so i should start searching for these keywords first retail retailing promotion trade promotion promotion schemes fmcg products so from this i collected around 62 indian studies and 38 foreign studies so approximately 100 so i am not collected 100 i collected around 5000 article but i filtered finally around 100 articles then i found the research gap so from the various reviews i found the research gaps that will lead to me the uh, formulation of objectives i formed the objectives to study the retailers evaluation of consumer characteristics trade promotion scheme so from the review of literature i identified this word consumer characteristics trade promotion schemes so my all the topics are related to trade promotion schemes so i found some words uh, channel related evaluation so consumer i have to study channel i have to study then company related things i have to study profitability related things i have to study but how i identify these keywords from the review of literature only i identify then i match with the objectives so next one i found some variables i said we have to find out the variables from the uh, research uh, articles i found two important uh, characteristics or variables i have to do uh, store characteristics okay store so i chose a location rural or urban and these are the type of outlet size of the outlet year of establishment these are things i want to collect retail with respect to the retailer i found a family background and education i consider this is a main important variable i have to focus then i have to study about the fmcg products right from this review i found that entire fmcg can be categorized into personal care household care branded food and beverages health care so i am segmented the variables and below that i have the sub categories then when i want to go for a questionnaire formulation or for analysis i need some keywords so consumer characteristics so these are the four objectives for this objective i need to construct that is a main heading you can uh, think it is a main heading consumer response and impact and response for channel i identified marketing effort trade reaction product quality salesman also so uh, so similarly you can find out the keywords or please make n number of question do factor analysis combine into one or two variables okay so for example this consumer response is the keyword which is identified in the review of literature but the data is formed based on four to five factors reduced using factor analysis 
that also you have to do so you are finding so these are the main construct you are going to study yes what are the schemes i have to study i found four different types of scheme from the review of literature quantity based scheme trade elements trade reward trade supported by branding when i go through the lot of review of literature these are the quantity schemes available these are the trade element scheme available these are the trade reward available these are the trade supported by so this gives me idea how i can formulate my questionnaire based on that i formulated my hypothesis also assumption okay so see in formulating the hypothesis i am related my topic my objective and my study consumer response these are the keywords i identified and i want to study the significant difference in consumer response and perceived impact on consumer and product categories okay this way we have to formulate the hypothesis so what i am saying hypothesis formulation objective formulation variable deciding tools and everything depends upon your review of literature then finally i found these are the maximum variables i said earlier uh, variables and scaling right so items these are the main headings under this i am going to use the sub headings product category this is a sub heading scheme category and this is a sub headings yes from this i formulated with respect to the retail i formulated eight questions product related i formulated four questions categorical for scheme related i categorized two dichotomous dichotomous means yes or no or male female only two answers and with respect to the retail perception i formulated 74 scaled see these things dichotomous two uh, options categorical which is not scale for example age is a category okay for example your occupation is a category which cannot be count which cannot be scaled only the satisfaction level or opinion which can be in a put in a likert scale we call it as a scale so for first three things i used dichotomous or categorical scaling for the final important thing retail perception i used a likert scale so totally 92 questions i am having out of that two dichotomous 16 categorical 74 this actually reduced from my data analysis in pilot study so 92 is my final questioner design yes so now i have to come up with a model so this is a model i use the two characteristic retailer this characteristics i want to study product category scheme category and product scheme category interaction category with whom i want to study a rural retailer urban retailer two types of retailer business background non business background so i want to combine it so by formulating these things i am formulating consumer oriented this is one outcome i formulated only one objective so these are the main variables actually if you see my hypothesis this will be incorporated here seeking a consumer response perceived as a product category so what you have to see your title your objective your hypothesis your model your questioner your analysis all should be in a sequence yes okay so i am just to uh, want to show the other models apart from my study so uh, for example here i want to study the actual behavior i want to study this independent variable this is a mediating variable this is one model if you want to study the behavior there are four different things these things are interrelated online shopping in store shopping other online shopping these other uh, model if you want to study the outcomes in teaching learning methodology this is outcome this is an input this is a mediating variable if you want to study the employee engagement these are all the dependent variable this is a dependent variable okay so how variable used in choosing tools are related you have to be very careful so i will show this why i am saying about categorical variable etc so here when you want to decide about what tools be used please don't decide your tools first but sometimes uh, your guide or university may say you have to use regression you have to use sem model means your questioner should be revised for revising the questioner you should have a proper review of literature okay so please ask the expectation from the university or from the guide then you have to reverse working so i am just giving an option to decide with the chi square if you have a two categorical variable categorical variable is not scaled then you can go for a chi square <coughs> oh, and next one is metric it is a measurable dependent variable with a categorical variable you can do a anova if it is a metric variable with one two options you can go for a independent sample for example it is with a gender okay it is with the type of family you can go for independent sample is irrespective of uh, anova we can do for two options 
metric and one or more factory variable you have to go for ancova if there is more dependent metric variable and more factory variable you can go for monova my thesis is based on monova only because having n number of factory variables and if you have a metric variable pre tested for example before the disease after the disease before the treatment after the treatment before the promotion after the promotion then you have to go for a pat sample t test if you go for a metric dependent and metric independent you can go for regression both are metric variable you can go for regression if there is a more number of metric variable grouped you can go for factor analysis so factor analysis is used to reduce the number of data or number of variable to help you if you have more than one metric variable it has to be segmented it has to be segmented so factor analysis will group uh, cluster analysis will segment okay next if you have a category one independent and metric many independent you can go for a discriminant analysis if you have a validity check if you want to check with item you want to check with a construct etc you have to go for a confirmatory factor analysis if you want to go for a n number of relationship you want to uh, compare with the n number of relationships with variable then you have to go for a sem to find out the combination of attributes how these attributes compared to the product performance you can go for a conjoint analysis why i mentioned this you can fix this basic tools to be implemented means your questioner should have that variable or data to be collected if you want to add that variable or scale you should have a proper review of literature theory if it had this theory mean it should be your objective based on your objective hypothesis should be framed so all are interrelated so please focus on these things okay so uh, with this uh, i can close uh today i shared something about writing a review of literature and what is meant by measurement what are the scales we can use how we can classify the variables and the model the way of writing a thesis okay so with this i can stop uh, if there is any doubts you feel free to ask you can type in the chat box if anything you want to get clarified uh just for your information i am sharing this uh, questioner form related uh, i hope this is visible to you so see uh, this first section is demographic variable okay this is a demographic variable this mostly have categorical variable so it is easy to collect and it has category agriculture business retail so only you can count it you cannot measure it you cannot count it how many owners how many managers how many owned how many rented so this is categorical then i use some scaling and finally i go to the likert scale so here you can see trade promotion objective impact of similar promotion these all can be called as a construct so for example you can see perceived consumer response to trade promotion this is a construct for this construct i should have this much number of questions or items so uh, some uh, thesis will have a question uh, what do you uh, feel about it like that it can be or it can be straight away it's a scale okay so these are the items by considering all these items i can answer this construct so by factor analysis we we'll try to reduce for example having 10 variable be factor analysis will say out of 10 4 is suitable or 5 is suitable this will say okay how i uh, used these words none of these words even it is a construct the heading or inside the item none of these words are written by me on my own even if you take respondent position owner and manager and others it is taken from one article if you take a ownership it is taken from one article so for each and every question or for each and every scale or for each and every option if you have one review from a reputed journal or from a reputed article whatever the issues that will be handled by your references so that's why we always says please have a proper review of literature to justify your topic your objective your hypothesis and your analysis even in your analysis why you are going for choosing an anova why you are choosing a chi square why you are going for a sem you can add two lines with respect to some reference then the evaluator will understand this is not your decision 
this is done with the recommendation of some other reputed article that is the expectation of the evaluators or that is the expectation from the current researchers okay so this is for your reference i share so i hope uh, i share uh, yes one uh, question you mentioned the nine steps of research it's in a phd only we can follow this for mtech project also yes sir so these are the major headings only sir so uh, it is not exactly nine steps so something will say six steps something will say 10 step but mostly all the thesis or article writing this will follow the headings only and again don't stick on to my nine steps or others nine step please go with the instruction what your university is saying or what your guide is saying that you have to follow uh suggest reference books or uh, or literature on the topic so uh, pradeep sir you can uh, send me a message in the whatsapp group you please tell you a topic so that uh, we are able to connect there is no need of a reference book sir we have a n number of uh, links that can be used for your reference so please share your topic either personally or in the group to the coordinator i will help you okay yes so any other support any other suggestions you want to add you can add Uh, if you need any support please uh, inform the coordinator uh, through which we will be helping in the further sessions also okay thank you so uh, uh, respected hachodi sir uh, okay, i request you yeah. to conclude okay like uh, yeah so the second day of the seven day ftp program Uh, I take this opportunity to specially congratulate and thank my dear friend and colleague, uh, Professor Dr. D. Ravindran, for having a very, like, uh, you know, precisely and uh, very clearly uh, discussed the uh, different aspects of literature review and uh, scaling, and also having given some very practical, you know, tips with regard to the development of uh, the. Uh, instrument namely the questionnaire and hope this has been uh, beneficial okay like um, as sir said no like if you have any specific uh, requirement or any assistance is required with regard to the area of your study you are welcome uh, we will uh, get back to you we, uh, you can just you know, put in the start book and we'll get back to you i once again uh, uh, congratulate uh, professor dr ravindran and uh, also express my deep sense of gratitude to all the participants who have been enthusiastically like um, involved in the session and uh, we will go ahead in the days to come with uh, more uh, uh, practical oriented aspects and we'll be discussing the um, analysis of data using spss in the days to come okay thank you thank you one and all thank you sir thank you participants this we will close the session thank you all